Stitch names are so confusing. So a few weeks back, I was researching a video and so I Googled the blanket stitch and I found so many tutorials and blogs and videos saying that the blanket stitch was the exact same thing as the buttonhole stitch. But I had always thought that they were different stitches, at least that's what I thought I had learned. But I was finding so many that were claiming otherwise that I started to question myself. And as a lifelong learner, I really do make it a point to make sure I never just assume that I'm right. So I did the only thing that made sense and I did more research. I pulled out a bunch of my books from my library and started looking through each one. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I found. Hello friend, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Milena with Thimble and Plume and we are historical costumers and we love sharing what we learn with you in order to empower you to become the best costumer you can be. So this is what I found out. While these two stitches do look a lot of like and they do have a lot of the same purposes and uses, they are definitely different. And each one does have some additional uses. So knowing the difference and adding these to your stitch vocabulary will increase your choices for decorative and functional stitching. So now that we know that they're different, let's talk some details and we'll start with the blanket stitch. This classic stitch, traditionally used in embroidery, is also valuable in garment construction. You can use it in a decorative manner to protect and cover the cut edge of a fabric. And it also is the stitch used in creating thread eyes and loops, bar tacks, as well as to cover hooks, eyes, and bars with thread. And I've also seen it being used in handbound eyelets. It is often used to protect the cut edge of a blanket as well as to add a decorative flair to the edge of a garment. The buttonhole stitch, like its counterpart, the blanket stitch, is also used in embroidery as well as in garment construction. It can also be used to protect and decorate a garment edge. And as the name implies, it is the stitch that is used to cover and protect the cut edge of the handbound buttonhole. It can also be used as an insertion stitch to decoratively attach two pieces of fabric and it is also a stitch that is often used to create needle lace. So now that we know what they're good for, let's learn how they're done. To make the blanket stitch, start by holding the fabric with the edge facing your off hand. Once you have your thread anchored, you're going to be working from left to right. You'll insert the needle from the right side and bring it out the edge. Make sure that the thread from the previous stitch is kept below the fabric and other the needle. Push the needle and thread all the way through the fabric and pull the thread until it lies flat along your fabric edge. You can see how it is being held there by the previous stitches. We've learned the blanket stitch, let's move on to the buttonhole stitch. For the buttonhole stitch, hold the edge of the fabric up and down with the edge facing your working hand. Make a counterclockwise circle with your thread and the needle will go into the fabric from behind to the front. Notice that the thread from the previous stitch is behind the needle and the loop we formed also sits behind the needle. Make that loop needle in from behind again noticing that we are keeping the thread from the previous stitch behind the needle as well as the the loop that we formed also we pull that through and pull away from the fabric edge so that the purl or knot that is formed sits alongside that edge make your circle insert your needle probably 
asking what about the spacing? How close or far should these stitches be? Well, it depends. The spacing for the stitch is really dependent more upon the fabric and the purpose of the stitch. Are you using it to protect a wool blanket edge? then space them in a way that's visually pleasing to you. If you're making buttonholes on the other hand, you'll want to space those much closer together. And insertion stitches on the other hand, often vary in spacing depending on whatever the design is supposed to be. So I'm actually working on a buttonhole video right now. So if you wanna see it, keep an eye out and I'll put it up here. In the meantime, here's a video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Happy sewing and I'll see you in the next one.